Well, it's also this thing, this need to belong and need to be accepted. Like we work to be accepted instead of work to be someone that you would want to be a part of the group. Instead of being like really honest about who you are and how you think and how you behave and how you operate in the world, instead of doing that and trying to prove upon that, you try to project an image of this. Well, then what, here's a question for us. Why is vice signaling so much more powerful than virtue signaling? Vice signaling, like a person who admits their problems, like an alcoholic who steps up and says, I've got a real issue. Could be that way, or it could be sort of Dan Bilzerian type vice oh, signaling. Okay. Like, you want to know what I'm into? I'm into hot chicks, weed, and guns, and, and making tons, tons of money and yeah. showing it off. Well, he's super honest. Right. You know, that's one of the reasons. And you, he's bulletproof in that regard. Like, you can't fuck with him. Like, you can't say, hey, look at you. You're just a playboy. He'd be like, yep. Yeah, I like girls. Yeah, it works. Yeah. Um, what else? Right. You know, I'm nice. Like, he's a nice guy. Talk to Dan Bilzerian. He's friendly. He's not a bad guy. No, I mean, he, he, you know, he, had a, he had this post, which was, uh, he was, I think, offering a hand to a woman up a stair. And it said, uh, come with me. I'll ruin your life, but it'll be fun. <laughs> you know, it, it was just like... <laughs> It's so disarming. Yeah. And I think that this is also partially, you know, a secret to your success, which is that you're a, a nice guy. You're really into fighting. Um, you're, you know, you, you hunt elk. You're clear about which ones you're going to kill, which ones you won't based on the reproductive cycle. You're, you're promoting all sorts of things that people don't want to talk about to a fairly conscious level. And it's produced um, an incredible level of trust in an era where all of the virtue signaling gives way. I mean, if you scratch any person uh, enough below the surface, you're going to see that they're really warning you about themselves. And so the people who are the most sort of self-critical, and, and this is like, you know, I think I brought this up recently uh, on Twitter about meta-honesty, where there was, uh, in the Castro in San Francisco, there was a, a bar, a restaurant that was advertising uh, free food, naked servers plus false advertising. And, you know, it was just fun and playful. And as a result, I, you know, you had an instant desire to, to eat there and to right. trust them. Yeah. And so I think that in this world of virtue signaling, vice signaling is really the growth industry. And that's, that's what's working for good people because they are more in touch and, you know, they are gonna lie to you and they're gonna do all the self-interested things, but they're not going to surprise you quite as much. Well, in the case of Dan Bilzerian, I really don't think he's going to lie to you. I don't think that's what he's doing. I think what he's doing is living like a guy who's got $100 million and happens to be 35 years old and likes to bang hot chicks and fly around in private jets and live in some... Have you seen that fucking house that he's got? He just bought some crazy house in like Bel Air, I guess with that weed money. Jesus. He's got some... It looks like it probably cost $100 million or something ridiculous like that. It's a fucking insane house. But that's what he likes. Yeah, you know the guy drives, likes to drive around Ferraris and and, but he's a nice guy. So it's like, well, what, where what's what's wrong with this picture? What's wrong with this picture is he's doing things that other, look at this. This is his house. What in the f holy fuck is that? Does he have a golf course on his roof? What is that? This is a fucking ridiculous house. Look at this fucking place. He gives his address out. Is that his address? It's pretty hard to hide that thing. Why the fuck would he give his address out? I don't think, I don't think he can get there. It's in Bel Air. Whoa, look at this house. It's preposterous. Yeah. Anyway, this is what he likes. But it, why is that bad? I mean, look, we only have 100 years if everything goes perfect. I know. What do you give a shit? Like, why does everybody give a shit? But, but they do give a shit. They give a shit a lot because for a lot of folks that are working, you know, making a, a good living, making, you know, 50 grand a year or whatever, that's it completely out of the realm of possibility well, and, so and his lifestyle wouldn't be sustainable for them i mean because yeah. he's taking real risk there's no question about it when you you know you get everybody stoned and then you take them to fire automatic weapons out in the desert oh yeah that's real risk and yeah. also the gambling he does a lot of like crazy gambling well but this is the thing about the uh, the relationship with the unforgiving this is partially why i think right. your ufc and jujitsu life is that when you have a relationship with the unforgiving, you can say, you know, that guy, that guy doesn't really know what he's doing, but then you're, you're in the ring, you know, you're the man in the arena and, and you find out very quickly whether or not the trash talking, you know, paid off or it didn't. And I think that many people have no relationship with the unforgiving. Like mm -hmm. you'll take them out on a hike into, you know, the, the, let's say the Trinity wilderness. And then two hours in, they'll just sit down and say, I want to go home. Right. And you're thinking like, Okay, you're you're signaling something, but there's there's no car service, and there's we're not calling a helicopter. 
you know, it just, yeah. th- there is this, if you live in the social layer, you're surprised by the existence of the unforgiving, but. Yeah. 